Good evening and God bless you. Thank you for joining us again for our teach time this evening. We want to just get into the word of the Lord and if you have your Bible, stand with me to the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. I'm speaking today on growing in faith. Um, we understand that each one of us have a, it's imperative on us to grow in faith. Now we know that faith is something that is developed, it's a characteristic even in our spiritual walk that is developed as we begin to trust God, as we begin to experience God, as we begin to encounter God, as we grow spiritually, we also grow in faith. And so I want to speak today and over the next few times that we, speak, we meet on speaking on how do we grow in faith. We all know we need to have faith. We all know that what faith is. Uh, we, we, we all, all know the importance of faith. We, we, uh, and in, important in applying faith even in our Christian life. We know the different elements of faith and, and how it is managed and how it is exercised. But it's important, how do I grow in faith? For someone that is just giving their heart to the Lord, for a believer that may be just stuck a little bit right now and, and do not know which way to turn, it's important to know how to grow your faith. And uh, there's many books that are written on faith, there are many testimonies of faith, but one of the things that encourages us the most is the word of the Lord. Now, faith is like a seed and as, uh, that is planted in our hearts and in our minds. And at an appointed time, it will begin to give us a mega harvest. So faith is like a seed. You plant it in your heart, you plant it in your mind. Amen? That means faith has to improve the, how I think and how I emotionally respond. This is very important. The Bible says out of the heart flows the issues of life. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Both areas of our lives require faith. That means we, we do not only require faith in our heart, we need faith in our minds. That means we can apply it even in our thinking in every part of our lives. So faith becomes the lens through which we view the world. The faith becomes the lens through which we view the scriptures. Faith becomes the lens through which we develop our spiritual lives. And so when we look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 7, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thanks, thankfulness. Now this is very important that faith needs to become one of those root elements, characteristics in your life. That means as part of your belief in God, it must be that you are developing your faith in him. Now, I want to share with you just a few thoughts. How do you feed your faith? You feed your faith firstly through the word of God. Kenneth Hagin, one of the great ministers on faith, spoke about faith begins where the will of God is known. Now, this is very important. We have to feed our faith through the word of God. How will you know the will of the Lord? The Bible says in the book of Romans, be he transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will know the good, acceptable and the perfect will of God. That means let, once there is a transformation of your mind and there is a changing of your thought patterns, changing of that which influences how you think and how you respond, 
then the Bible says you will know the good, the perfect, the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now, it is God's desire for you to know his will for your life. And you, the best way of getting to know God's will for your life is through the word of the Lord. Now, in Psalm chapter 34, verses 8, it says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Amen. So the Bible says, come and taste and see that God is good. How do you know the will of the Lord? You get into the word of the Lord. Psalms chapter 119 verse 103 says, Your words are so choice and so, and so tasty. I prefer them at, to the best home cooking. This is the message translation. But it says your words is, is food. Is, is more, I, I desire your word more than necessary food. Now, you know, for all of us, we like food. But when we come to the word of the Lord and, and, and the psalmist is saying, I desire the word of God more than my necessary food. He's saying there's so much more that I, I am built up. There's so much more that satisfies me. There's so much more that, uh, that, that, that begins to fill my life as I begin to read the word of the Lord. When last did you read the word of the Lord and it ministered to you? You didn't read it just like another book. You didn't read it just like another story. But you allowed the scriptures to come alive in you. I pray, this is where faith is stirred up. Your faith is encouraged as you read the scriptures and the spirit of God breathes fresh life into that word. And as you read it, you, there is a new energy, there is a new strength, there is a new uh, impetus in your life. There's a, you just feel impacted to do so much more. I pray that may you grow in faith as you begin to read the word of the Lord. In, in John chapter 14, verse 26, he says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance that I have told you. I pray as you desire to grow in the word of the Lord, as you read the word of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit will keep on bringing to your remembrance the word of the Lord. Because that is the, the, the job of the Holy Spirit. He is there to teach you all things and to bring all things to your remembrance. What the Father has said, that which Jesus has dared declared. Now, how do I grow in faith? So the first part we know is by reading and feeding on the word of God. Getting the word of God inside you. That means, like, like the word says, I desire the, the word more than my necessary food. But the second thing I do is I exercise my faith. That means the Bible encourages us, even in the New Testament, he speaks about, he says, you should begin to develop your gifts. That means you develop your gifts by reason of use. How do you exercise your faith? You begin to use faith. You begin to activate faith. You begin to let faith become part of your belief system and part of the way that you live your life. Now, this is very important. In John chapter 8, verses 38, it says, I tell you things which I have seen and learned at my father's side, and your actions also reflect what I have heard and learned from the Father. He says, I tell you things which I have seen and learned at my father's side, and your actions also reflect what you have heard and learned of the Father. That means faith needs to be exercised. That means that which we've seen demonstrated in the life of Jesus. That which we have seen demonstrated in the lives of those that are sons and daughters of God that for us has symbolized faith and, and, and show how faith is demonstrated. We learn and we, we, we exercise what we have seen. That means we reflect what we have seen. That means Psalms 119 
Verses 5 says, Oh, that my actions will constantly reflect your decrees. We're starting to see that we exercise our faith when we reflect firstly how the Heavenly Father has demonstrated faith for us even in our actions, in the way we live our lives, in the things that we say, in the way that we speak. Faith has to become practical. It has to influence how we think, how we act, how we behave, how we live. Amen. It must mainly, it must affect our confessions. One of the things that I find is that many times we know a lot about the word of the Lord. Sometimes we can quote it, but it doesn't affect our lives in such a way that it influences how we speak. Faith should influence how we speak and what we say. Faith must be an action. In James chapter 2, verse 17, it says, So also faith, if it does not have works, it is destitute. That means it's dead of power. That's what the Amplified Version says. It says, faith without works is dead. That means it's absent of power. Amen. Your faith has to be active. Your faith must be seen. So when we talk about exercising your faith, it is, means that it must become part of your life. It must become active. Now, I'm just asking Annie to just read verses 22 of James, James chapter 2. Verse 22 says, Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? Amen. So we see faith and works working together to begin to, to be complete. He says, faith and actions together begins to make faith complete. Amen. So this is something when we talk about exercising our faith, it is understanding that I develop a, a, a faith in terms of a mindset uh, I, I, through the word, but then it must be demonstrated in my life. It must be an action. That means faith, you will be rewarded for the actions that you will take. When you exercise your faith, God will begin to reward you. That means in, in, in Proverbs chapter 24 verses 12, it says, do not excuse yourself by saying, look, we didn't know. For God understands all hearts and he sees you and he who guards your soul knows you knew. He will repay all people as their actions deserve. That means God knows you. That, that's what the scripture is saying. God knows you. He knows your heart. He knows, he, he watches over, every, he sees everything that we do and he watches over our soul. So he's saying he will repay the actions that you demonstrate. That means God responds to your actions. When you demonstrate faith, God will respond to you. Amen. And when God responds, he responds favorably. He responds on your behalf. When you exercise your faith, you bring glory and honor to the name of the Lord. Amen. And when you bring glory and honor to the name of the Lord, automatic success becomes your portion, becomes the blessing over your life. Amen. And I want you to know that God will always watch over those. Amen. He says, Behold, in Revelation 22, verse 12, he says, Behold, I am coming soon, and I will bring my, my wages and rewards with me to repay and render to each one what his own actions and his own work merit. Amen. That means God says, I'm coming. But I'm not just coming back to receive you to myself. He says, I'm coming back to reward those that demonstrate faith in their lives. That means he says, I'm watching over your actions. Now it's not coming about just confessing that you're a believer. It's not just about confessing that you're a child of God. It's about living it. Faith without 
works without action is dead. God says he's going to reward you for your faith. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus says, when I return, he asks the question, when I return, will I find any faith? And I want to, to emphatically say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Would you answer the same? Would you say, yes, Lord? And in doing that, would you grow in faith by reading and studying your word, applying it? Would you grow in faith by exercising your faith? Amen? As you begin to exercise your faith, you will grow stronger and stronger. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you. You're a faithful and you're a great God. Thank you for your hand upon us. Help us, Lord. You help each one of us to grow in faith. We know that there's a measure of faith that has been given to each one of us. And Lord, help us to be faithful stewards of that which you have entrusted in us. And so like you have worked in the lives of many before us, work in our lives today. Lord, we know we need it. Lord, we know we need a move of God even in our day. A move of God even in our lives. So today, help us to grow each day in faith. Amen and amen. God bless you and take care.